Hello friends, for today's lunch I'm making a comforting Caribbean stewed red snapper along with a creamy cornmeal cuckoo and as a bonus I'll share my recipe for a simple simple veggie rice or seasoning rice. If this looks appetizing to you, come with me to the kitchen and let's start cooking. Today I'm using about three pounds of red snapper and this fish is fresh and you know it's fresh when the flesh is still firm, the eyes are not cloudy, and it does not have a bad stinky odor. To prepare the fish, we'll scrape off any scales, then we'll cut the fins with a knife or a spear of scissors, trim the tail, and we'll cut the fish into one inch to one and a half inch pieces. To wash the fish, we'll place it in a bowl, fill it with cold water, add about a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, and then swish it around to remove any freshness. And we'll repeat rinsing with cold water until the water runs clear. You can also use the juice of a lime or a lemon to wash the fish. If you're gluten-free, just the lime or lemon will do. We rinse the fish for a total of three times. We'll allow the fish to drain while we get the seasonings ready. Five tablespoons of green seasoning, one and a half teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, Next, because I was in a rush and I needed to save time, I placed the fish in a resealable bag with about one and a half cups of all-purpose flour and then swished it around to coat it. Next, I heated about one inch of oil in a frying pan. I dusted off the excess flour from the fish and placed it in the hot oil. I will fry or cook until the bottom is golden brown and then we'll flip to the other side. Again, if you're gluten-free, use a gluten-free substitute or skip the flouring of the fish altogether. Because the fish will continue to cook in the stewing process, the goal here is to get a nice golden brown color and not fully cook. We're going to cook it only about 70 to 75 percent. Frying adds another level of flavor. Next, we'll shake off the fish and place it on a paper towel or a parchment paper lined sheet pan to drain off the excess oil. Then we'll repeat with the second half of the fish. Now that they're all done frying, it's time to stew the fish. I'll add about four tablespoons of oil to a wide saute pan or skillet. Add the brown sugar, and here I'm adding about four tablespoons of brown sugar. I'll allow it to froth, bubble, expand, and darken. I'll carefully add the onion, ketchup, and green seasoning and give it a gentle stir to combine. It is important to cook the ketchup here in the oil to transform and elevate the flavor of the ketchup. Once we're done, it will no longer be ketchup. Next, I'll add the tomatoes, the carrots, bell peppers if using, hot peppers, and the scallions. Raising the heat to high.
I'm adding a teaspoon of minced garlic and a couple of sprigs of thyme and give it a stir to combine. We'll cook this for a total of three minutes and then we'll add hot water. I'm adding a few okra, okra as we call it. These were frozen, still a little frozen. Next I'll add salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste. At this point you can add the boiling water to create a sauce and then add the fish, but today I'm adding the fish first. We let this cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's a gentle simmer for all the flavors to melt together, combine. We'll add the last cup of water for a total of about four cups because we want sauce. And the flour from this fish is going to absorb some of that liquid. So all that we have to take into consideration. All right, we're going to bring it to a boil and simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. Looks lovely, smells amazing. And you know it's already delicious. And while that's simmering, let's start working on the cornmeal cuckoo. Here are the simple ingredients for your cornmeal cuckoo. You'll need coconut milk, one cup of fine cornmeal, minced onion, thyme and garlic, bandanya or scallion, okra, pimento or hot pepper, diced bell pepper, which is optional. In a medium bowl, add the cornmeal and about two and a half cups of the coconut milk to make a smooth and runny consistency. Allow it to sit, it will absorb all the liquid, so do this before adding it to the pot. tablespoon of butter. Now we'll add the onion, minced garlic and thyme, the pepper, red bell pepper, mento pepper, okra, and the bandanya. and stir it. We'll cook it down for a couple of minutes. Allow it to sweat, allow it to release its flavor. About two to three minutes. Instead of oil and butter, you can use coconut oil. if you wish to keep this vegan. Now I'll add two and a half cups of the coconut milk. Stir to combine and I'll boil it for three minutes. It would really help if you used warm or hot coconut milk. You could warm it in a pot on the side. It'll really expedite this process. Also mix the cornmeal with the milk right before adding it to the pot or else it will absorb all the liquid and you'll have to continue to add more. I'm adding one teaspoon of salt and then I'll taste it and see if it needs more. These are really beautiful colors. Always help to make your Dishes colorful, it's appetizing and healthy at the same time. Give it a taste. Mm -hmm. Could use just a little more. 
So that's one and a half teaspoons of fine Himalayan salt. And I'm telling you it's Himalayan salt, so you can adjust if you're using table salt, which is saltier. Now that all the flavors are well balanced, the salt is enough, and all the flavors of the ingredients have infiltrated that milk or somehow flavored that milk, that coconut milk, now we'll add the cornmeal with the mixture and keep stirring to prevent any clumps. And it's on medium heat. It's thickening as you can see. It's now 10.52. Let's see how long it takes to come together. We'll cook in a whisking motion for about 5 to 10 minutes or more. It all depends until it thickens and comes away from the sides of the pot. And then we'll pour it into a glass dish. The milk is slowly evaporating and it's thickening even further. Also keep in mind that the flavor is dependent on the quality of the coconut milk that you use. So invest in the best quality and fresh is always best. If you're using canned coconut milk, mix it with enough water to make about four and a half to five cups. I'll turn off the camera and come back after five minutes. It's been five minutes and this has thickened up considerably. We will continue to cook it for a couple more minutes. I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter. This is the best quality butter you can buy because you deserve it. We'll add flavor and creaminess to it. I'll come back another after another three minutes. It's about eight minutes, and it, this is what it looks like. Falls very thick, and I think this is going to be fine. Just one more minute. I have no idea why people say it takes 20 minutes. Maybe because of the addition of too much liquid. But this looks good to me. I'm going to pour it into the bowl and you will see that it will set. If it doesn't set, I'll let you know. When you stir it, it's coming away from the sides. Taking off the stove, it was on medium heat for eight to nine minutes. To finish up the cuckoo, we'll pour it into an eight by eight glass baking dish or Pyrex dish, and we'll smoothen the top with a spatula and allow it to cool. As you can see, it's still at a pourable stage here. It did not give too much trouble, and there was not too much scraping from the pan. We'll easily smoothen the top. This is going to be easy because of all the butter we added. As you can see, this was so very simple to make. Other than the stirring, the prep and the ingredients were quite simple. Next, we will move on to the simple, simple mixed veggie rice. When you want one drama-free, simple dish to complete a meal, this is it. I promise you it's going to taste as if we spent hours making it. Prep only took about 5 minutes and let me show you how easy it is to put together. I'll add 2 tablespoons of coconut oil to the pot. A 
allow it to melt. Next, I'll add the onion. And we'll cook it until the edges become golden brown. The edges are brown, which means that there's maximum flavor here. And now we'll add the garlic and the green seasoning. About two tablespoons of green seasoning and one tablespoon of minced garlic. The heat is on high. We'll cook that for one minute. If you wanted, you could have added turmeric at this point and allowed it to cook about a teaspoon. But since I shared a similar recipe already, I'll leave out the turmeric. Today we're going for a clean, simple recipe. Now I'll add the mixed veggies. That's about 14 ounces. Let's use about a cup. That's about eight ounces. I cooked it for 40 seconds and now I'm going to add the rice. About two cups of rice. And we'll cook this for two minutes. I'm adding a teaspoon and a half of salt. Add according to your preference. Make that about two teaspoons. Now we'll add the hot water. And that's about three and a half cups of hot water. Give it a stir and we'll bring it to a boil. This rice in all its simplicity is one of the most delicious rice I've ever had. The first time I ate it, I thought it had a lot of butter in it, but it was the coconut oil that gave it that silky, delicious flavor and texture. I forgot to add the pimento pepper and the hot pepper, so I'll add it now. Usually you'll add it with the onions. Now that the rice grains have appeared on top, we will cover the pot and cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes. And that's all there is to it, my sweet friends. That's how quickly this delicious lunch combo came together. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a lovely comment below. I always love hearing from you. Until next time, stay safe, be well, cook, share, and love. Bye-bye.